her reading in Canto 1, Shima Bhagavatam, chapter 10, text 11 and 12. This is a chapter when Krishna is leaving for Dwarka, and just yesterday he got permission to leave. I'm just going to read the transliteration. Satsangat, by the association of pure devotees, Mukta Dushangaha, freed from bad materialistic association. Hatun, to give up. Na, Sahayate, never attempts. Buddhaha, one who has understood the Lord. Kishyamananam, glorifying. Yashaha, fame. Yasha, who? Sakrit, once only. Akarnya, hearing only. Rochanam, pleasing. Tasmin, unto him. Nyasa Diyaha, one who has given his mind unto him. Partaha, the sons of Pita. Saheram, can tolerate. Viraham, separation. Katam, how? Darshana, seeing face to face. Sparsha, touching. Samlapa, conversing. Shayam, sleeping. Asana, sitting. Bojanai, dining together. Translation. Oh, no, this will say it all together. Satsangam Mukta Dushango. Satsangam Mukta Dushango. Hatun no Sahate Buddha. Kirtyamanam Yasho Yasya. Sakrit Akarnya Rochanam. Tasmin Yasta Diyak Partaha. Saheram Viraham Katam. Darshana Sparsha Samlapa. Sayanasana Bhojanai.
Foundation Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The intelligent who have understood the Supreme Lord in association with pure devotees and have become freed from bad materialistic association can never avoid hearing the glories of the Lord even though they have heard them only once. How then could the Pandavas tolerate his separation for they had been intimately associated with his person, seeing him face to face, touching him, conversing with him, and sleeping, sitting, and dining with him. The living being's constitutional position is one of serving a superior. He is obliged to serve by force the dictates of illusory material energy in different phases of sense gratification. And in serving the senses, he is never tired. Even though he may be tired, the illusory energy perpetually forces him to do so without being satisfied. There is no end to such sense gratificatory business, and the conditioned soul becomes entangled in such servitude without hope of release. The release is only affected by association with pure devotees. By such association, one is gradually promoted to his transcendental consciousness. Thus he can know that his eternal position is to render service unto the Lord and not to the perverted senses in the capacity of lust, anger, desire to lord over, etc. Material society, friendship, and love are all different phases of lust. Home, country, family, society, wealth, and all sorts of cor corollaries are all causes of bondage in the material world where the threefold miseries of life are concomitant factors. By associating with pure devotees and by hearing them submissively, attachment for material enjoyment becomes slackened an attraction for hearing about the transcendental activities of the Lord becomes prominent. Once they are, they will go on progressively without stopping, like fire and gunpowder. It is said that Hari, this personality of Godhead, is so transcendently attractive that even those who are self-satisfied by self-realization and are factually liberated from all material bondage also become devotees of the Lord. Under the circumstances, it is easily understood what must have been the position of the Pandavas, who were constant companions of the Lord. They could not even think of separation from Sri Krishna, since the attraction was more intense for them because of continuous personal contact. His remembrance by his form, quality, name, fame, past times, etc., is also attractive for the pure devotee, so much so that he forgets all forms, quality, name, fame, and activities of the mundane world. And due to his mature association with pure devotees, he is not out of contact with the Lord for a moment. So we've been recently getting a lot of biographies on some of these uh, great devotees who were here at the at the when Lord Krishna is leaving for Dwarka. And some of their reactions and um, a couple of verses ago is describing how they're all some of them are, are just torn by the separation and, and feeling, um, feeling faint, feeling like they, they don't know how they could tolerate it. Um, so this, these devotees are out of our league. They're, they're way beyond what we could imagine um, as far as, as uh, having affection for, for the Lord. Um, but we can appreciate hearing about them. And, and appreciate and, and have great respect for their, for their exalted position. Um, and here it's describing the Pandavas. Um, of course, they, I don't think there was a time that they didn't have association with, with Krishna, and even in their childhood. And then all this time on, on Hastinapur and on the battlefield, so much association we, we can't imagine here, describing sitting, sleeping, dining with them uh, personally. So that impression was very great, and that affection is uh, is is flowing out at this point. Um, and the, the just think of the separation of it, what it's going to be like was probably very intolerable. So um, when I was sweet sixteen, I uh, had a uh, a boyfriend who joined the navy, and it was. Uh, he was way over in Japan or somewhere like that. And every day, you would open the mailbox and there would be a stack of letters from every single day. 
And my parents must have gotten the biggest kick out of it because they, 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 you know, it's just 16 years old, and they could understand the frivolousness of, of it. You know that here I am, you know, in this temp temporary situation. And my lover's across the sea, and he's writing letters every single day with X marks all over it and everything, the whole thing. And uh, you know, I'm so happy to receive it. Can't wait. And but they're thinking, this is just a temporary thing. It's going to be a fly-by-night. You know, thing, and before you know it, he'll be gone. Of course, of course, that happens. Um, so, and how many more times does that happen in one's lifetime? That this this illusory uh, energy creates that lust, and you, your affection goes out. But the impressions aren't so strong. Nothing like the pond of it. Um, it is described that you know the heart grows fonder with separation, um, and for the Pandavas, uh, we see that does happen when, when he actually leaves. Uh, but our material affections, puny, it's such a, a shallow, shallow thing because everything is so temporary. But our affection not only comes just from our attachment to our body, but then it extends to our dog. So many people are just over the you know over the heels of, of their, their dog, and, and even for your home or your car, right? Or a sorry. I mean, you can get really attached to your favorite. Like I really like this sorry. You know, it's one of, my, one of my favorites, you know. And but eventually, it's going to end up in my workshop in a rag bag, right? So it's it's ridiculous that we get so entangled in the attachments that we have for, for these very temporary things. Um, and it's not like I'm gonna, you know, not, I can't, you know, tolerate throwing this sorry away or anything like that. It, it's just not deep like this, this eternal love that we have for our eternal lover, Krishna. Um, it is out of the ballpark, totally. Um, the, the love that the Pandavas have um, for Krishna. Uh, when I first came to the um, temple, it was just a small little temple room in Boulder. And um, when I went inside, ha half the wall was taken up by this one beautiful painting. I don't know where it ended up, but it was a painting of Akura, uh, who was, you know, told to go get Krishna and Balaram, take him away from Vrindavan, and bring him to the wrestling match. King Kamsa who wanted to kill them. So, in that picture, there was a, I was totally bewildered what was going on at that point because I just joined that day. But the devotees, the, the gopis, the beautiful maidens of, of, of Krishna were laying on the ground and their faces were black. And it was painted very, very black. And I was thinking, what? Why, why their faces are black? Why are they crying? Why they're hanging on to the chariot? And, um, and we realize now that this, this, this was intolerable, that the Krishna was going to leave them for who knows how long, even if it was for a day. Even when they go to the pasturing grounds, grounds to take care of the cows, they were in anxiety. So this is um, a, a situation which we can only try to imagine, um, of how these surrendered souls, fully surrendered souls, are so attached to to Krishna. Um, we're given an example that there's a, a regular tree on the bank of the river, and the reflection of that tree is on a, a really nice pond, a really a very still pond. And that the, that is, you know, you touch it and the little waves go and it's broken up. Or you might go to grab the tree, grab something off the tree, and you might just fall in. So, because it's temporary, the real tree is on the bank of the river. So the real affection and love of this intense um, uh, degree is there in the spiritual world. It's not here in the material world. Um, and we, but we go after it. We go after it again and again. Okay. We, but we jump in after this. We try to grab all these temporary things. And we get wet every single time. We get dissatisfied every single time. And Maya is so tricky. She has so many spells that she can put on us 
that we do it lifetime after lifetime. We're diving in to try to in, uh, enjoy all these things just for the, the lust of these senses. And it's, it's a pitiful scene. Um, probably as pitiful as the gopis are, 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 are missing Krishna. Um, but we don't understand um, that this is all the tricks from Maya because of our original desire to, to leave Krishna and be Krishna, be the supreme enjoyer ourselves. But the pure devotee, she's very, the, the pure devotee is sharp. You can, you can see that this is Maya's tactic coming in here. And they can avoid it because they have the intelligence sharpened by hearing, hearing all these scriptures, um, sharpened by the pure devotees, um, instructions and, and engaging us in, in purifying processes. So we get kind of tuned in. Oh, I can see Maya's lurking around the corner. Don't go there. Don't open your arms and be embraced by her. So this is the advantage of the association of devotees and of the spiritual master, which is described here, that they can um, help us to, to tighten our, um, uh, our, our guard against Maya, who is always after us. Uh, and it's amazing how that we go after these, these temporary things again and again. And it's describing here how you get tired. The, you know, non-devotees, they work really hard. And they just think, well, I just need one more thing, so I'll just get another job. Or I need a little bit more of this, so I'll do this austerity. And they get tired and tired. And, and, but they don't admit it. They just keep going for it again and again. I met a person in the parking lot one time, and he was so tired. He was just coming out from work from the Publix, and, and I tried to convince him to take a break. He says, no, no, I, I, I'm a, I work here in Publix, and I have to work hard because I don't want my son to have to work as hard as I did. So I'm going to get money and, and make sure he has plenty of money and a good job, and da, da, da. And, I, and I said, just do me a favor, just take a book. Because there's more in life than just working. You have to work on your soul, too. And he goes, and I said, what do you do? He goes, I'm a butcher. No. And I said, please take the book. <laughs> please, give it to your son. You know, something, you know. You really want to give him something. Anyway, he didn't take a book. So. He touched it, though. So. Um, anyway, so this, they don't admit it. They don't admit that they're wasting this human form of life. Uh, for such a, 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 an important position we have of, of taking shelter and learning about the purpose of life, going back home, back to Godhead. Um, so the devotees are very fortunate. We have our feet implanted on the ba bhakti path, and the bhakti marg. Um, Papa is leading us back to the spiritual world. But, but sometimes we do still have our hang-ups and our, and our, um, and our, our attachments. Um, but we have so much to do in a day that we don't leave a lot of gaps for Maya to come in. There's you know, the whole morning program and service and seva and, and responsibilities for Krishna um, that we, we feel very protected if we engage properly in, in the instructions of the spiritual master. And we understand that if you... If Maya offers this and promises this, and, and if you add it all up, we know real mathematics, that all these things that she offers, it all ends up to be zero. So we don't go for it. Uh, we go for the real goal of, of Krishna consciousness. So here um, we understand that Krishna has really left an impression on all the devotees that we heard about in the last two days, and um, that they will never forget Krishna, ever. Anyone who has contact with Krishna will never forget Krishna. And the most amazing thing is that Krishna will never forget us. Even though we are so, we, we leave him, he will not forget us. Uh, he stays within our hearts and is just waiting for us to turn to him and to show some some uh, some life within our soul again. Um, so the Pandavas have a very unique relationship of fraternity. 
with Krishna. And we realize that even within this fraternity, um, this friendship relationship, the Pandavas all have a different kind. Like Bhishma has a whole different relationship with Krishna than Arjuna. And even Yudhisthira has a very different friendly relationship. Uh, Madhumati the other day was about to, I think, describe the different friendly relationships in the nectar devotion. And there's, there's the simply the friends, and then there's, then there's the well-wishers, and then there's the confidential friends, and then there's the very intimate friends. So we can almost see those kind of in the, within the Pandava, the five Pandava groups also, that they have different relationships. But this variety of relationships is, is the spice uh, of Krishna's um, uh, relationships with everybody. He has such a variety of relationships. Everyone has a unique relationship with Krishna. Um, every once in a while, uh, Richir and I get invited to, um, to organize a feast uh, for the Lord to figure out what we want to make for a big uh, feast here at the temple. And so we actually sit there for days and we think, okay, well, we've got to make sure there's a lot of contrast so that you don't just get a plate with everything yellowish brown like you do sometimes in Christian Have you ever noticed that? Because they put turmeric in it, ends up brown, kind of yellow, but everything looks the same. And, and, and we say, okay, we got to have a little red in there, we got to have a little yellow, we got to have different colors. And then we also think, well, then we have to, our sweets. One has to be hard and dry. One has to be wet and, and gushy. So we have to go through that, figuring out all the different categories and who's going to make it. And then we have to think of the subjects. We have to have one with fried, one with curd. We have to have all the different varieties so that the appetite is there, that Krishna will, will want to enjoy it in so many different ways. So this is, um, is important also in our relationships. We have so many different relationships, and it gives that spice, that flavor, that appetite um, for Krishna to, to, to love us more and more. So we can see even within the, the gopis, the, you know, the cowherd lovers of Krishna, uh, there's different flavors. There's the right group, and then the left group, and there's the sharp-tongued ones, and then there's the real sweet, nice ones, and the surrendered ones. And then, then you look at um, the, uh, let's say, the different uh, elder gopis and the elder uh, gopas. They all have different re relationships. And the queen, Sachabama, Heavy duty, right? Heavy, very demanding. And then there's root meaning sweet, oh, whatever you want, you know? And, and so different relationships makes it wonderful, makes the, makes the spiritual world go around. Um, so now we, we're coming to this point where um, all these wonderful devotees have so much affection, now Krishna's leaving. So it's, a, a, it's actually a tease. It's a tease from Krishna. He, he's expert at teasing. Um, he wants them to, their hearts to become more enchanted and more anxious to have his association. You can think of like the Rasa dance, when Krishna, and, you know, in the middle of the night, somehow or other plays that flute, and they all think, oh, let's go enjoy with Krishna. And they all come at, with great endeavor to sneak out of the house and to leave everybody and sneak out there and be there for Krishna. And then they get there, and Krishna goes... What are you all doing here? You should, be, you should be taking care of your family. Why are you here? And then he disappears, of all things, and they have to go looking for him. What a tease, right? Uh, and then they all come back together and enjoy individually, uh, ecstatically with Krishna. Uh, Dhruva Maharaj, he was sitting there in, um, and trying to get some material things, but meditating on Krishna, and Krishna comes right before him, and... Then Krishna, he goes, wow, I can't believe you, Krishna. You're just like more than anything I think I can imagine. And then he disappears. Oh, not going to see me again. Teasing so that he's more anxious. Um, even Pariksha in the womb we were reading about, he sees them. And then all, the, he gets the name Pariksha, examiner, always looking for Krishna. So Krishna can do this um, to increase our, our love for him. Um, Unfortunately, um, sometimes even the devotees of Srila Prabhupada and, uh, and, and within this movement, they uh, might leave the association of devotees, might go off to play around with Maya, but somehow or other, they never forget Krishna and Prabhupada. 
And we've seen it happen so many times because the impression of the, devo of the Supreme Lord and the, his representative is so powerful as it describes here. That also, we can't forget that, that that attachment and affection is there because it's so strong. Um, so it's very important that we um, reach out um, for this, uh, this relationship of um, guru and disciple and of, of becoming Krishna's surrendered soul. So it's described that lava matra, one, one little teeny portion of a second, that much time in association with the pure devotee or the devotees of the Lord can impress your life such that you will never forget Krishna and he surely will never forget you. So we have to really take that opportunity to have that association. Um, because it can, can save our life. We saw that it, it was so powerful that when Prabhupada came to the West, um, we were just lost souls walking around the streets and looking for something, looking for the absolute truth for some of us. And the minute we saw Prabhupada, the minute we got a book, the minute we heard the holy name of Krishna, we dropped everything. We did, we just dropped everything and became devotees of Krishna. That's how powerful it is. The stories of Lord Chaitanya going down in South India, going to diff different villages, and just going to the village and just touching a, a, a person in the village, and they would get ecstatic love of God. And then those people would go and they would touch another person in the village, and they would get ecstatic love for God. So um, the Supreme Lord and, and his representatives are so potent that we should uh, make sure that we take advantage um, because we could see how Shiva Prabhupada saw that we weren't qualified, but he snuck us in the back door, like put us on stage, and now we're just like pretending to be devotees, right? But he, he, he did it. He, he just snuck us in and said, don't, don't, you know, they're, they're a mess, but that's okay. Just, just make them do something with them. And so Prabhupada did. He just figured out something for us to do for Krishna, and we're pretending that we're devotees, and, Hopefully we will be someday. Um, so Krishna's having to be very patient with us. Uh, and now that we're getting the opportunity to do some service, we have to be patient for him to accept us because we, we uh, don't have the qualifications of these great devotees that we've been hearing about and we don't have that great affection. But we do see that there is some affection there Lately, we've been hearing of this decade of tears, I think it's described, that every day on Facebook you open it up and another god sister, god brother is ready to leave their body. They're ready to leave the, you know, our association. And we're feeling that separation. Oh, it's just, you know, those devotees have such great qualities. Oh, why is Krishna taking them? But it's glorious that he is taking them. So that affection... Um, is there, it's coming about, and um, uh, we just have to be patient and realize that it will grow and grow and, and pray um, that we can keep engaged, that we don't get too comfortable thinking that, oh, I've been around for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and, you know, Krishna will have mercy on me, and, you know, I can just flake off. But no, we have to keep engaged and keep getting the mercy of the spiritual master so that we can... Uh, stay very sincere and, and strong. Um, here is describing the Pandavas how, how they had so much association, but there's many examples when different personalities got so much affection and so strongly attached to Krishna, not by seeing him at all, not by being around him, but just by hearing about him, just like Rukmini. She heard about this Krishna how wonderful he was, how he was the, you know, the, the cream of the Yadda dynasty, everything. She just got so excited that she wrote Krishna a letter, he had it sent. I'm going to have to marry this horrible guy. Can you please come save me? I just want you as my husband. And sure enough, that did happen, and she became one of Krishna's first queens. And she, get, she had so much affection just by hearing. Of course, that increased and increased and increased where she became one of the, the most wonderful um, attached queens of Krishna, so much so that when Krishna decided to take a, play a joke on her, 
because she was such a mild personality, Krishna kind of wanted to see her get upset. So he, he started talking to her and saying, you know, you, you sent this letter and you, you know, to kidnap Amy. You didn't really know too much, of, that much about me. And now, you know, I don't even know, you don't even know what caste I was. And, and I'm not so great of a person. And I, I'm doing all kinds of frivolous things. And I've got, I don't, you know, you, I think you picked a wrong husband. And she's thinking, you mean he's going to leave me? And see, she had such intense love for Krishna that she just fainted. Because that impression of, of Krishna's love was so strong. So just by hearing about Krishna, that can happen. Uh, also, the residence of Mathura. Um, Mathura is just down the road from Vrindavan, you know, not that far. But Krishna never left Vrindavan, didn't even go to Mathura. But all the residents of Mathura heard about the wonderful glories of Krishna. And then when Krishna actually was taken to Mathura, they all got on top of the roofs and wanted to see this personality. And they were just like, wow, he is... He's, he's way more than we ever thought. You know, he outdoes what we've heard. He's the greatest. So much so that one of Krishna's servants, Kubja, uh, was about ready to give the sandalwood to take to King Kamsa. And she, she said, no way. You deserve it. And gave the, the sandalwood to him. So this is just by hearing. The more we hear about Krishna, the more, these more, more impressions will come within our hearts. What less coming here and doing direct service, getting to to touch the Lord. We also have the opportunities to, to have very close association with Krishna with this wonderful um, process of, of, um, of bhakti, um, keeping us very tight with Krishna. And we see that it is working, um, getting anxious to serve the, the deities and getting anxious to come here and, and do different things for Krishna is, um, is feeding our soul. Uh, I mean, I, I personally can't imagine waking up like after the sun gets up and just getting up and eating breakfast and then going to do a job or something like that. I mean, with no japa, waking up late with not chant japa, can you imagine not chanting your japa and not coming to see the deity and not hearing a class in the day? Can you imagine not hearing Bhagavatam? I mean, you'd be starving your soul. You know, you, you would it'd be so uncomfortable. I mean, we're really not comfortable. After we've been impressed by Krishna consciousness, it, it's, like it says here in this purport, very stale. Who cares for it? Who wants it? No, we want Krishna more and more. So this, this process is working. We have to nurture it more and more. Um, I've been recently reading um, Chaitanya Bhagwat and about Lord Nityananda. Right here, Lord Nityananda. And he, uh, he went on pilgrimage. He had not met Lord Chaitanya. He, he was just a young person and he was, decided to go visit all the holy places. And he, he left and he went to so many places, so, so, um, so many deities and, and met so many personalities. And then he was on pilgrimage and he met Madhavinda Puri. Madhavinda Puri was uh, in the embodiment of ecstatic love for Krishna. Um, so when they saw each other, it was so intense that, that Madhavinda Puri fainted and then they embraced and then Lord Nityananda fainted and they spent days just nourishing each other telling people, uh, telling them about Krishna consciousness, nourishing back and forth. And they didn't even realize it was day or night or anything. And they kept falling down in ecstasy, rolling on the ground, it had such love for Krishna. So this is uh, an exhibition of, of, of what happens when one becomes attached to K in Krishna consciousness. Just hearing Krishna Kata can do that to uh, a pure devotee, as is described here in this um, in purport, that um, the lust turns into to love, un unlim unlimited love. Um, and there are other dis descriptions uh, by different um, disciples uh, that are from Madhavinda Puri that also achieve the same state of love of Godhead. And these are some of their responses of, of feeling their separation 
and they're missing Krishna, and they're missing, um, missing that greatest love for Krishna. Although they're, they're just expressing it. They have it, but they're expressing it for our benefit, so that we become more anxious. And this is uh, some, some lamentation. This is uh, by Nartam Das Thakur. I will smash my head on the stone. I will enter into the fire. Because he's missing Lord Chaitanya and the associates of Lord Chaitanya. What pain, what sorrow. I have forgotten that the holy name of Sri Krishna is everything. So just even that attachment just to the holy name can make you feel the separation and sorrow. Another one. Why have I not simply perished being robbed of the jewel of divine love. And another one, since you have, have not attained to the, have no attraction to the holy, the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Nityananda, what can I say? I can simply think of my misfortune. Yamaraj, the superintendent of death, is punishing me by not allowing me to be attracted by this movement. So these are things that we should be able to uh, identify with that, oh, why am I not anxious to go out there and distribute Bhagavad Gita this week? Why, why am I not giving all my money to this marathon? Why don't I have the attraction to spread this movement for Lord Chaitanya and for Sri Prabhupada? Um, so this is uh, a nice example where we should pray that our, our lust for the material things we've had for so many lifetimes will turn into love for Krishna. Um, the lust has separated us, and the bhakti or the love will bring us back together. So we should be very eager to take up as much service as we can in this lifetime, while we can, while we still have our senses and our minds together, uh, not um, miss an opportunity to do service for Krishna. Um, I have transcendental lam lamentation, one time I was asked to do something and I didn't do it and I've lamented ever since. I was, my husband came up to me and asked, said, we've just been asked to start a temple in New Zealand. And I said, New Zealand? Now where is that? And it, it was on the other side of the world. And, and, I, and I said, I don't think so. And I, I lamented ever since. But anyway, so if someone taps you on the shoulder, Prabhu, can you go start a temple somewhere? Or can you do this? Yeah, don't, don't pass it up. You'll be sorry. <laughs> Transcendental lament, lamentation. Huh? So there is, let's see, uh, there's something I wanted to say about my garden realizations. Um, this week, because um, it's very important that you speak from your realization. So I'm out in the garden all day, and I'm thinking of the Pandavas, you know, and I'm thinking of this, this uh, verse of how the Pandavas are so great and so wonderful and everything, and then I, I look at my peas in my garden. <laughs> I said, I'm just like a pea, you know? But I said, these peas, they're, they're actually not doing so bad. They, they, got, they didn't get frosted that, with that big frost. And I said, you know, um, Vishnu Das here, can you, they, they need to grow on something. Can you put some rope around them so they can crawl up? Because peas have a natural tendency that they want to grab onto something and grow. Because if the peas are on the ground, then the peas rot. So they have to, they have to be raised on something. So, so he built this little peepee thing with some bamboo and started putting the rope around it. And I swear, you could almost see them going like when you're putting the rope on, really. I mean, by the next day, they have these little twirly things that Krishna make, gives them, you know, these little teeny little things, and they're all starting to wrap around. And now um, we're being tortured. We really are. We're being tortured. There's troubles for us made by these material energies just 
everyday special ones just to uh, pinch it. Um, just like this stupid pandemic, it's just pinching us like crazy. So it is more important that when you get in a situation where you're being pinched and everything, you figure out, okay, how to get out of here. Just like if I threw Divyunga in Lake Alice. Lake Alice is known for alligators. Tons of gators in there, you know. So many people have lost their dogs, you know, just walking around that, that lake. They come out and grab the dog. And, and so if I threw you in there, what's the first thing you're going to do? Yeah, how am I going to get out of here, you know, before they start chomping me? So we're here in this material world. Every day we're getting pinched. How do I get out? And so this is where we have to latch on to uh, the instructions of the spiritual master, to the pure devotees, to this knowledge in the forms of books. Um, it's so important that in this lifetime that uh, we, we get out. But unfortunately, the, gov the, you know, the society is inventing things purposely to keep us here, that we think we need some more things. But the, real impor the most important thing to get out is that we realize that we have to not want so many things. It, it's advised that um, we don't endeavor so much for all these unnecessary things, that we simplify our life, and we just take as much as to keep our body and soul together, and that we release us from some of all these bondages that we have, and spend our time latching on to Krishna consciousness and this knowledge which will get us out. So um, this is the, will fulfill the purpose of our life, and hopefully it'll be our last lifetime. If not, we'll come back and do some more service. So any questions, questions, um, comments, other advice? Thank you for your usual inspiring class. Akutifu. Um, you're mentioning about how um, when Nityananda and Madhavendra Puri were, came together and how they were exhibiting so much love and falling off and getting up and giving. I was thinking, yeah, there are different ways that um, love is exhibited. Like this morning, you know, um, those peacock feathers on, painted on Krishna are it's just an expression of so much love there, um, affection for Krishna. And then I was pointed out to this other uh, peacock that Primanjali mentioned to me, that that flute, in case devotees don't know, that flute that Krishna is holding, and that peacock, you think that's a peacock that's um, somebody that is a peacock feather? But that's actually not a peacock feather. That's Mother Akuti has carved that peacock feather, uh, the wood. It, Krishna's flute is wood and it's carved. I mean, that is just amazing. That, that's an exhibition of affection. So I just want everybody to know that that's affection. What do you think, Akuti? It's would dovetailing. I get to use my sudra abilities. <laughs> but Krishna loves individual flavors, so he loves that dumping of dovetailing or whatever you want to call your eagerness, akuti. So I just, just yeah, this is an exhibition of affection. So when you started off the class saying, you know, the Pandavas are so far away, their affection. So I don't know, Akuti Prabhu, if, if it's so far away, at least for you. Uh, and, and for Mother Ruchira, you know, I just had to say that. Mother Akuti ki jai. Baba ki jai. Otherwise, I'd be making. Actually, one time I did, I made this huge thing because it was a uh, carved relief thing for, to put over someone's bar. <laughs> What a waste of human life. <laughs> I told that, it was that cab cabinet company down, down the road. 
they had heard that I made your thing, and they called me up and, <laughs> and asked me to make something that I didn't have made in China, and I, I made it, and I, I was just like, Ugh. it was like, Ugh. it was painful, it was tiring making the thing, because I knew it was going to be put in some parts, and, and I, I, I told the company, please don't ask me to do anything. For those of us who uh, feel perfectly fine waking up after sunrise and not chanting our job the first thing in the morning, what hope is there? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just keep doing it. That's, it. That's the recommendation. You just, you just keep doing it and pray that you can get some, some attachment to it. But uh, keep doing it. That's all we can say. <laughs> Well, when you get older, there's not too many more things you can do. You know, so. Thank you, Kuti Prabhu. Thank you for all your, you know, shudra services, <laughs> 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 which are all like completely amazing. <laughs> Thank you for the eco farm. So awesome. Isn't it amazing this um, temporary quality of the material world and how we, because we're like eternal, but we. It's like so painful, this transient, temporary nature of the world. You know, and, and our true identity is eternal. And so on some level, we're looking for that eternality and then that material um, temporariness, like sort of, it's like so um, painful, right? And it, it's amazing that so many people like out there don't, like they don't get it, you know, like, or they don't take a book or they don't, they don't think that there's something else, you know, even if it's like presented to them, they don't like take it. I, I think it's described, I don't know if you've ever like stayed up all night and gotten so tired, you just, you just like on automatic, you know, and I think these, these people are just so tired and so bewildered and just like exhausted that they just keep going like that, you know, until they drop dead. You know, it, it, it happens that you get to a point where you just, you're oblivious to what's happening, you're just doing it because you, you're like intoxicated. They're intoxicated, that's what happens. She, those spells are intoxicating and they just, they, they lose it. And they, you, you, and you like, you go on Santa time, you, you, you feel like shaking, you've got to wake them up, you know? Instead, you just stick a lollipop in their mouth and hope it, <laughs> it, it disintegrates in their body and <laughs> does some work on them. Yeah, it just doesn't have like infinite patience. I was just like, with some of my friends, for example, from high school, whom I keep in touch with, it's just like infinite patience, yeah. you know? <laughs> like they, they still want to be your friend, but they're not really interested in the book you sent them, or, you know? So it's just like, okay, so I'm just like patiently waiting for you to yeah. have that moment when you wake up. <laughs> Krishna's been very patient with us, and so we have to be patient with him, try to trick him into doing some, some service, or trick him into... Give him a Christmas, Christmas book for Christmas or something. And, yeah, sometimes we have to disguise it. It's their only hope. Howdy, Bo Prabhu. I was just curious, what happened to the Navy dude? He came back and you had joined the cult or what? There's a woman in every port. Yeah. <laughs> there sure is. <laughs> yeah. So he might, nice, have, he might not have been faithful and chaste? I found a nice Japanese woman in there. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, that's love, isn't it? <laughs> That's love. that's love, you know, you're, you're, he's writing letters, I miss you, I miss you, hey, they got <laughs> girls over here too. Yeah. <laughs> this material world is cheating, cheats you, it cheats you horribly. <laughs> well, I have a couple of online questions. Uh, first one from Yoga Bhakta. If one notices complacency in herself, are there books in the movement that will help a person out of that condition because it's very difficult to always stay in the fire of fired up Krishna consciousness. But if you are not in the fire, you become complacent. Whoa, which book? I can recommend so many books. Um, Nectar of Instruction, Nectar of Devotion, I'll give you just so many books. Uh, yeah. How about a uh, cookbook? <laughs> How to offer it? Eat a lot of prasadam. Uh, I, 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 
nectar devotion is really sweet. Yeah. They're all they're all sweet. You know, for every bite bite it bite it, but the sweet ones. You know, nectar devotion, nectar sweet. Not nothing too long, because then you get lost. Next question is from uh, Mahavishnu Priya Mataji. We, sh- we should all be as eager to please the Lord as those dedicated devotees around us who inspire us. Yeah, Their so service attitude can be cur- contagious, correct? Right, exactly. So we got to rub shoulders, or rub elbows, I guess now, uh, <laughs> with, our, with the ecstatic devotees. And uh, yeah, I, when this pandemic is open, there's going to be a lot of embracing. So you really get the mercy. But we can embrace by, by uh, exchanging Krishna Kata. And then um, Goshta Bihari Prabhu says, I wish Krishna consciousness was as easily contagious as COVID-19. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.